Greetings, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. And today, of course, is the first of February. We have entered the jolly month of February. We've got a holiday coming up in a couple of days, so I'm sure you're getting all excited about that. But hey, remember, you still got to learn your English before you can forget about it during your holiday. So we're going to be teaching you something today about perfume or perfume. It kind of depends on how you want to pronounce it. It's that special kind of liquid that women use to make them smell differently, to smell. Better to smell more attractive to men or to other people. Do you wear perfume,、uh, Stephanie? Of course. And I wanted to say, perfume is really only used for women or girls who are wearing these wonderful smelling fragrances. You could say, if you're a guy, it's a different word for you guys. We use the word cologne. Don't、mm. use perfume, guys. Don't say, "Ooh, I just bought a new kind of perfume." No, it's only for women. So we're going to be focusing on perfume, how it's made. It's kind of an interesting process. It's not a job I would like because when I'm around really strong smells, or you know, even if they're good, if I go to the department store, you know, in the cosmetic department, they always are spraying perfumes or asking you, "Oh, do you want to try this?" I get headaches. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, me too. Actually, some of those women wear perfume, and it's quite、Woo! strong. Especially、yeah. if you get stuck in an elevator with、oh. someone who has too much perfume on. That goes for the guys too. If you guys are wearing really strong cologne or aftershave, ugh. Be a little、yeah. careful with that. You can put on too much. There is such a thing as too much of a good thing. Yeah. But、uh, of course, you might be wondering, hey, how do those companies come up with these different kinds of perfumes? Do they、yeah. pick them off of trees or something? No, they need to hire people who are experts in this, and they've researched this, and they've gone to school and learned this particular skill. So we're talking about these perfumers in today's lesson. So the title, of course, is the noteworthy noses behind. Perfumes. So let's get to it, everybody. Let's listen to the entire contents of our lesson for today, and we'll be right back. As you wander around the fragrance section of a department store, you're astonished by the sheer number of perfume choices before you. They range from clean smells of fresh laundry to calming notes of jasmine and white tea. Each boasting its own unique essence. Who formulates these scents, and how do they go about their craft? Behind every fragrance is a perfumer or perfume designer, hard at work. Perfumers, also colloquially called noses, fuse different aromas together to create complex scents. Their work requires them to sniff out subtle differences. Between hundreds of ingredients, and combine them in complementary ways. A career as a perfumer can be rather challenging to achieve. In fact, there are only about 600 of them currently working worldwide. Much of a perfumer's work relies on trial and error. They need to adjust and readjust a formula until they find the perfect composition. To evoke the desired emotion or effect, it can take as many as 800 diverse ingredients and months of experimentation to design a single signature scent. Consequently, a great deal of persistence and patience is required. Aside from a keen sense of smell, skilled perfumers often possess a degree in chemistry, as in-depth knowledge of an ingredient's chemical properties. And an understanding of how essential oils interact are imperative. Training for a perfumer never truly ends, however, since the art of perfumery is constantly evolving. Perfumers translate emotions and memories into smells, allowing us to feel more attractive, more powerful, and more ready to take on the world. Now that you know what it takes to develop a fragrance. You may have new appreciation for finely crafted scents. The time has now arrived for us to discuss the contents of today's lesson. So, 
Let's get to it, everybody. First of all, we're going to talk about the title of today's article: the noteworthy noses behind perfumes. Okay, let's first of all talk about this word noteworthy. If something's noteworthy, it's worthy of attention. It's worth taking a look at. It's something you should pay attention to. It's interesting. It's significant. It's profound. It's important. Indeed. So these are noses that people have that we want to talk about, and these are the noses behind perfumes. Now, of course, you know we've talked about perfume. We talked about it at the beginning of the program.、Yeah. The pronunciation of this word might cause some confusion for people out there because you can say perfume or perfume. Both of those pronunciations are acceptable. Perfume might be more common because most two-syllable nouns are accented on the first syllable. I don't know. When I was growing up, everyone said perfume, so I think it kind of depends on where you grew up. Yeah, I would say perfume myself, but.、Uh, Generally, for two-syllable nouns, the first accent is accented. There are exceptions, of course. Well, that's like, because this comes from another language. It's French originally. Well, most words in English do come from other languages.、Mm, this one's really close, and so we've kind of capped the pronunciation. Like ballet is also French. Uh, right, there's an accent on the first See, syllable there.、Yeah. Ballet, ballet. Although ballet is also correct, it's one of、oh, right, those right, kind of words. But、yeah. generally speaking, yes,、uh, two syllable nouns are accented on the first syllable. Fragrance. We've got section here. Perfume. I say perfume myself.、Me、I guess,、too. as you say, because it's a kind of a French word, and we think of the French when we think of perfume. And let's、uh, take a look at the first part of this、uh, lesson here. The first paragraph. It says, as you wander around. The fragrance section of a department store. You're astonished by the sheer number of perfume choices、yeah. before you. So, if you go to a department store, they are still around. They're still quite common. A department store. They're all over the place. And of course, I could take the example of Sogo on Zhongxiao Donglu there, Zhongxiao East Road. And the fragrance section is on the first floor there. So, if you go in there and you wander around that area. Area, you're going to be astonished, surprised. You'll be even shocked at the sheer number of those perfume choices that are there. Before you, so here we've got the word sheer.、Uh, sheer in this particular case means, I guess, large amount of something, something that's quite、uh, surprising.、Yeah. A sheer number of choices. It's a surprising or an amazing, a large, large amount of choices that you have there. Yeah, well, often use it to kind of emphasize something being kind of crazy. The sheer nerve of that guy! Like if someone does something that takes a lot of,、um, I don't know, guts to do, and you're kind of surprised they did it. Wow, the sheer nerve! Or the sheer courage of that guy to ask out that model on a date. I can't believe it. So we'll often use it just to really emphasize that we're surprised about something. And like Tom said, it's kind of a big deal. But here, yeah, the sheer number of perfumes that you can buy—it's kind of crazy. I've been wearing the same perfume probably for. Oh, twenty-five years now. I love it. I don't change perfumes very often, and I've had strangers ask me what it is. When I was in New York, I had some guys on the subway go, "What are you wearing? I want to get it for my girlfriend." But、uh, when she finds something you like, you might want to stick with it. But and you don't want to tell anybody else either,、no. or they'll steal your idea. Well, you don't want everyone wearing your scent. You want it to be, you know, special to you, specific to you. Turns out the perfume I wear is actually by an Asian designer. But back then, when I first found it, I wasn't、uh, living in Taiwan, but I still like the scent. I think it's because it's got some of that jasmine、uh, type of flower in it. Let's go back here to our department store. Okay. And、um, they'll have a、uh, lady and men who work in the department store who will ask if you want to try a little bit. They'll spray it on you, or maybe put it on a piece of、uh, heavy card, a heavy paper, and give you a scent or a smell that way. But、uh, be careful. There are a lot of people trying to put perfume on you in department stores. You don't want too many fragrances on at the same time. We've got a description here of different scents. Don't use the word odor for perfume because odor、no. means bad, like something smells bad. But scent, S C E N T, and fragrance, fragrance are both. 
Really nice smelling things. They are, and odors are things that、uh, you don't want to comment on, like body odor. For example, somebody needs to wear their deodorant or stinky fish.、Uh, there you go, or smelly feet, or whatever.、Ugh. But in any case, yes, you've got lots of choices there, and here's a range. They range from clean smells of fresh laundry to calming notes of jasmine and white tea, even boasting its own unique essence. So this is a Way you can describe odors or fragrances. We've got a range of fresh, clean smells, like the smell of fresh laundry. When you take your quilt out on a sunny day and put it in the sun, and when you take it down, it has that fresh smell to it. Although I've been told that that's the smell of、uh, dead dust mites after they've been killed by the sunlight. That's what I've been told. But in any case, people like that smell. Fresh laundry coming out of the dryer, and that's one smell you might get if you're buying. Perfume. Also, we've got this、uh, calming notes of jasmine and white tea. So, notes here. Are we talking about music or something here? No. And I was just looking this vocabulary word up in my dictionary. For beginners, you would think they would have lots of different、uh, definitions. They do, but they don't have one for this. Okay. So you will see this word "note" being used when people are talking about different types of perfumes and the different ingredients that go into it. Different notes just means different scents. You know, and a note of this, it has a note of lemon or a note of this, but you don't see it very often. But just know that you'll come across this word "note," and it has nothing to do with music or writing someone a little note on a piece of paper. Nothing like that. It's actually a scent that's combined with other scents to make up that perfume. Because you'll find out soon, these perfumes have a lot of different ingredients that are combined together. Right, and of course they have their own unique essence. Essence, of course, is kind of like the general feeling of the thing. There's nothing else like it. Quality, a characteristic. Yeah. There you go. So we've got a question here: Who formulates these scents, and how do they go about their craft?、Mm -hmm. So here we've got the verb to formulate. That's from the noun formula,、mm -hmm. which is like a special mixture of different ingredients for something. You could have some kind of chemical formula, for example, if. You're trying to make some sort of fertilizer for crops or something like that. You'll need a special kind of formula. But here the verb is formulate. That means you put together different ingredients to create some kind of result. We'll often use this word, guys, when we're talking about someone putting together something very carefully. For example, you might want to ask your girlfriend to marry you someday. You might really want to formulate a great way to, you know, ask her to marry you. Or if you're in a class and you want to impress a teacher, you might take some time to formulate a good question. Or formulate a good response if you're asked a question. Just means you take more time to put something together. Of course, we use this a lot when we're actually putting together something in chemistry. You know, maybe you're in a lab and you're putting different、uh, chemicals together. You might want to formulate something by figuring out what chemicals you're going to combine or mix together. And how do they go about their craft? How do they actually come up with some of these formulas for perfumes? We're going to find that out in just a second, right now. But let's take a break and listen to our Chinese teacher. Hello, everyone. My name is Tina. 我们今天来看到第一个空格的句子写着 ，They range from clean smells of fresh laundry to calming notes of jasmine and white tea. Blank one, its own unique essence. 在这里呢，讲到是不同的香味，从刚洗好衣物的清新气味，到茉莉花跟白茶的调性都有。Range from A to B， 就是呢，范围从 A 到 B 都有。然后在这里打了一个空格，有它自己独特的香精。我们来看一下选项 A， Each of them boasts. B. Each boasting, C. Each boasts, D. Each of which boasting. 在这里要考考同学们句构的概念。前面是一个完整的句子，那如果后面还要再是一个完整的句子，我们就必须要用逗号加上连接词，或者呢以关系代名词的方式来表达。那么关系代名词也有可以用来当做是形容词的用法。所以如果你答案选 A 选项的话，必须要多上一个。
and 这样子的连接词。那如果答案要选择 D 选项的话呢 ，each of which 后面就可以加动词，要用 both。所以如果我们把 D 选项去除，然后把这样子的关系代名词去掉，动词是主动的 boast 改成 boasting， 就是正确的答案了。所以这一题的正确答案，我们就选择 B。Each boasting, 在这里的 boast 呢，是解释成为以拥有什么为自豪。前面提到的每一种呢香气，都以拥有自己独特的香精而自豪。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. We shall now resume our lesson and continue talking about people who formulate perfumes. Okay, how do they do this? How do they go about their craft? Well, behind every fragrance is a perfumer or perfume designer hard at work. So, behind every fragrance, if you buy a new perfume at a department store, someone designed it. Someone came up with this idea, and that person is a perfumer. Perfumers, also colloquially called noses, fuse different aromas together to create complex scents. So colloquially, they're called noses. We've got colloquially. That's kind of a hard to pronounce. But just that means just means kouyu. How do you say that colloquially? Or what's the colloquial way、mm -hmm. to say that? Well, yes, you're just a noser or a nose, basically. And <laughs> if you kind of put two things together to create something new, we say to fuse those things together. Like what's happening on the sun, of course.、Uh, we've got nuclear fusion going there. Hydrogen atoms are being fused together to create heat, light, and and also helium atoms. When they come together, too, they actually turn. Into one thing, so don't use this word if you're just mixing things together. You can still see the separate parts that you're putting together. Fuse might be used to talk about a bone you break in your arm, and the doctor puts a cast on, and the bones fuse back together. Or maybe you're burning something. You're using heat, and those two or three ingredients join together, and you can't pull them apart again. That means they're fused. So fuse things together. These noses are fusing different aromas. Aroma is another word we use for something that smells. An aroma is also a good thing. It's not a bad thing. So you want to use that for maybe food that smells delicious. Ooh, what's that aroma in the kitchen? So here they're fusing together different things to create complex scents. It's not easy, and they usually have a lot of different ingredients they're combining together or fusing together to produce that one perfume. Their work requires them to sniff out subtle differences. Between hundreds of ingredients and combine them in complementary ways. Complement here just means things that go together well. It doesn't mean you're saying, "Oh, wow, you look pretty today." No, if things complement each other, it means they are suited. They match. They go together well. And here we're using this cute phrase to sniff out. <laughs> That's what dogs do a lot of times. You know,、mm. they put their noses down and. They're sniffing things out. Sniff out subtle differences, very small differences, and then they find things that go together really well. That's what they do. They combine them together to come up with these things that are complementary. No, that does not mean they're saying nice things to each other. In this particular case, complementary means they go well together. They don't make each other look bad. They actually help each other out. And here in the next paragraph, it says a career as a perfumer can be rather challenging to achieve. Indeed, if you want to be a perfumer, it's a challenging career. In fact, there are only about six hundred of them currently working worldwide. So, if you want to be one, my goodness, there are only six hundred positions, and they're already taken. 
You could probably maybe apply for one of those positions if one of them happens to retire or something like that. But、uh, you'll have lots of competition, and much of a perfumer's work relies on trial and error. That means you try something and you learn from your mistakes. Trial and error, but you need to adjust and readjust a formula until you can find the perfect composition to evoke the desired emotion or effect. So yes, you're you know you're doing your research and you know all your chemicals and the atomic. Number of all these different atoms and stuff like that, but、uh, you know you still got to smell them and figure out if they smell nice. And so you want to come up with a great composition, which is basically when you put things together to form something. You could have a composition in artwork, for example, if you combine you know different elements like apples and oranges and bananas, you can get a nice composition there. All these things. Fit well together. You can have a musical composition, and the same can apply to perfume. And you're trying to find this composition to evoke the desired emotion or effect. So if you evoke an effect or an emotion, it just means you bring that particular feeling or memory to someone's mind. And that's what good smells do. They remind us of good times in life. Hopefully, it can take as many as 800 different or diverse ingredients and months of experimentation, that trial and error, to design a single signature scent. A signature scent. We usually have cosmetic companies that come up with their signature scent, like Chanel Number、no. Five. That's their signature scent. That's their big. Scent that is probably most well known. They'll produce other lesser known scents, scents that aren't considered to be the signature. But if you have a signature style or a signature scent, it's something that's very distinctive that everybody knows your product because it's pretty famous and people remember you or think of you when they see that particular signature design or scent. Yeah, they also have their own unique bottles as well. So that's another subject which we won't get into today. That would be of interest to glassmakers. But again, you've got all these different ingredients and lots of experimentation to have that signature scent. Consequently, a great deal of persistence and patience is required. Persistence means you don't give up. You keep trying, and you've got to be persistent. You've got to be patient. Aside from a keen sense of smell, skilled perfumers often possess a degree in chemistry. As or because in-depth knowledge of an ingredient's chemical properties, and an understanding of how essential oils interact. Are imperative, so you've got to have or possess a degree in chemistry. Possess is just another word for have, and imperative here just means you've got to do it. It's important. It's necessary. That's right. So training for a perfumer never ends. You're always learning. Actually, a lot of people are like that in whatever career they choose. It says since the art of perfumery—that's what it's called—is constantly evolving. So someone might say, "What are you studying?" I'm studying perfumery. I want to be a perfumer. So perfumers translate emotions and memories into smells. Allowing us to feel more attractive, more powerful. That's the women out there. Remember, guys, we use a different word for you, and more ready to take on the world. My dad would wake us up in the morning with this phrase. You know, are you ready to take on the world? Are you ready to conquer the world, to face the world and be successful? So, if you're taking on the world, you're not shying away from challenges. You want to get out there and be successful. So, now that you know what it takes to develop a fragrance. Or perfume, you may have new appreciation for finely crafted scents. Yeah, this is one career that is definitely a craft. Something that takes a lot of finesse, a lot of very subtle understanding, and a very good nose. If you want to go into this field. Mm, and I suppose the same applies to men's cologne as well. Hey, I think I'll head down to the local department store and try some out myself. That brings us to the end of our explanation. We still need to hear from our Chinese teacher. Let's do that now. 第二个空格的句子写着 ，Their work requires them to blank two subtle differences between hundreds of ingredients and combine them in complementary ways. 在这里的 their work 指的就是这些调香师的工作，他们需要怎么样？数百种成分之间的 subtle differences 指的就是微妙的差异，然后再用互补的方式。
complementary ways 来把它们呢结合在一起。第二题的 A 选项 sniff out 闻出来 ，B give in 让步 ，C ward off 避开 ，D cast out。逐出蚊香师的功能跟作用呢，就是要能够嗅出这些气味之间的细微差异。所以第二题的标准答案，我们就选择 A sniff out。接着我们来看到第三个空格的句子，后半句写着 ：They need to adjust and readjust a formula blank three. They find the perfect composition. 在这里提到呢，调香师要一直去调整，然后再调整一种配方，然后连接词，他们找到一种完美的成分。我们来看一下第三题 A 选项 ，lest 以免 ，B when 当什么时候 ，C until 直到 ，D after。在什么之后，他们要一直调整这样的配方，直到他们找到完美的成分。所以第三题根据文意标准答案就选择 C until。空格四的句子写着 ：Consequently, blank four persistence and patience is required. 因此呢，调香师的工作很繁重。然后怎么样 ？Persistence 坚持以及 patience。这样子的耐心是必要的。第四题 A 选项 quite a few 相当多的 ，B a large number of 也是很多 ，C a good many 都解释成为很多的意思。D 选项 a great deal of 也是有大量的许多的意思，他们的意思都一样，但是后面所加的名词的单复数形式不一样的。A。B、C 后面接的都是复数的可数名词，只有 D 选项的 a great deal of 后面加的是单数不可数名词。所以第四题的标准答案后面是 persistence and patience， 都是不可数名词。我们要选择 D 选项 a great deal of。第五个空格 aside from。A and blank five sense of smell. Skilled perfumers often possess a degree in chemistry. 除了怎么样的嗅觉，这些呢非常有技巧的调香师呢，也是通常具备着化学的学位。他们的嗅觉是怎么样可以来形容呢？第五题 A fatal 致命的 ，B damp 潮湿的。C idol 闲置的 ，D keen 敏锐的，他们的嗅觉是相当敏锐的，所以第五题根据文意，答案就选择 D keen。第六个空格 perfumers blank six emotions and memories into smells， 这些调香师他们有办法把情绪跟回忆转换成为味道。第六题 A guarantee 保证。B endure 忍受 ，C translate 转化转变 ，D bargain 讨价还价。调香师的功能就是可以把你的情绪跟回忆转换成为味道，所以第六题的标准答案就选择 C translate。最后一个空格。Now that you know what it takes to develop a fragrance, you may have new blank seven for finely crafted scents. 现在知道调香师呢应该具备的所有条件，你就会对精心制作出来的香味有一种全新的什么呢？第七题 ：A. Depression， 沮丧 ；B. Appreciation。认识正确的评价 ，C occupation 职业 ，D calculation 计算。第七题的标准答案，根据文意就选择 B appreciation。OK， 以上就是今天的课文讲解，谢谢收听。That is it for today, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us, and please make sure you join us again next time for another edition of our program. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Bye. See ya.